If you want to learn more about doing AutoCAD floor plans, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. So today we're going to be doing text, hatches, and dimensions from our previous lesson. So what we're going to do today is I want you to open your drawing from last week. If you haven't done last week's video where we go over how to create this basic structure right here, I'm going to leave a link to that right in the top right hand corner. You can go check that out and then come back here when you're done with that. So what we're going to want to do first is we're going to want to do our text. I'm going to show you how to annotate this a little bit. If you need more annotation help, here's another video that can help you with annotation. So the next thing we're going to want to do is create a new layer for our text. Uh, I'm going to use this layer for the dimensions and everything else as well because it just keeps it nice, it keeps it tidy, and it's less work for us to do. So if we come up here and click layer, you're going to see I have one called layer one already. I am going to change that style to a red type color. I'm going to click OK, and then I'm also going to come here and rename it to text. This is also goes for dimensions, um, but uh, you could also put text slash dimension, dimensions, text and dimensions, whatever you want, whatever works for you. Line type and line weight, we're going to keep the same. Once this is done, just double click on your text and it will switch to that layer. So once you've selected your text layer, you're going to come here to annotation and you're going to go and click on this A right here. You're going to see I have a thing called text test style. That's only for this lesson. So what I want you guys to do is deselect annotative and I want you to select a height that's appropriate for the drawing. In this case, it's set to two feet, but that's a little big. I'm going to do one foot. You can see that there's a variety of things you can change in here to make your style fit your drawing. Uh, normally, I use annotative styles. If you've seen my previous videos, I do stick with that most of the time. But I felt like in this video, it was better to just show you how to make your own style. So if you don't like using annotative styles and you find them confusing, you can just come here and edit the text and you can change this style and it'll show your text change in real time on the screen. Uh, if it doesn't show that in real time, then you can also just create new text and you can trial and error it to make it work for you. So we're just going to set everything, this, keep it basic for now, and we're just going to set the height to one foot. Once this is done, click apply, click close, and then we're going to have our style ready to go. And you're going to see that it is also selected in our drop down menu here. Once this is done, we can click on the A, and you can see that it gives you a preview of how large the text will be. For this lesson, this is relatively good for what we want. So what we're going to do is when you have your text selected and you haven't placed it down, you're just going to want to select the first corner. You can see in the bottom right quadrant of our cursor, we have an A, B, and C. Again, this is a preview of what you're going to see and how large your text is. You can just select the first corner of where you want it to go. You can drag the box as far down as you need it to go, and then you can click, and then that is it. So we're just going to call this room one. And then I'm going to click off, and you're going to see my text is exactly where I want it. So we're going to do our dimensions now. It follows the same kind of process as text, but there's a few minor differences. So just come here, click on dimension style, and you're going to see I already have one selected. I want you to click new. I'm going to click modify, and it should bring you to this um, new box. So just come here and go to text. You're going to see I have it set to six inches. Everything here looks good, so keep it the same as mine. If you need to pause the video for a minute and take a look at this and then put it into your video, please be my guest to do that. Once that's done, come to primary units, and you're going to see that the unit format is different than the units we set for the drawing. With this in mind, we're going to come here, we're going to change it to architectural, and we're going to make sure that it looks good, and yeah, it looks like what we need. So this little preview box right here shows you what your dimensions are going to look like when it's on your drawing. Uh, the scale isn't great for everything. Um, Sometimes it, it looks bigger or smaller depending, but it gives you a rough idea of how, you know, how it looks. Uh, once this is done, just click OK. And then once that's done, you can click, click Close, come here, select your dimension style in the drop down menu that you created. You can see ours looks crazy large, but it's not actually. So just come here, click Dimension, and you're going to see that our dimensions fit and you can just click on the top and the right hand side of your drawing to create the main um, dimensions for your drawing. One thing to note when you're doing dimensions is you're going to want dimensions for all of the major things in your floor plan. So this includes you know little little sections like in this wall here, the section of this wall and you're going to want probably the door width, the widths and everything. Um, usually you don't um, do door widths like I'm doing, but this is just an example. And you're also going to want all the major things on the inside as well. Another thing to note is when you are doing dimensions, you can either click hover over the line and you're going to see it's just going to show up and show you the size of that line, or you can click from corner to corner and it will give you a proper dimension for where you start and where you exit. 
So we're just going to go here. We're going to delete this one here because we don't need it. We're going to go back to our dimensions and we're going to do, you know, all the major things here. So just come here. That's a five foot window. We're going to want to do, you don't necessarily do this all the time, but we're going to do it just for this video. You can also do the um, width of your walls. So I'm just going to do that. I'm also going to do the width of my interior walls, which is six inches. This was all in the previous video. And you just want to make sure you cover the base of almost everything so that when someone else is reading your drawing, you need to make sure that they can understand what you're putting. That's why it's important. Uh, if you're a student right now in this video and you're watching this video to help you out, keep that in mind. Like your teacher is going to want to see that you know, you know, where to put things. Or if you're in industry, that's a good rule of thumb as well. Another thing is you generally want to keep your, your distances away from the walls the same so that it looks uniform and nice. I'm just going to leave the dimensions that I did here for now. You can sit here, copy them if you'd like. If you think you need to add more dimensions, please feel free to do it. Again, this is just an example. The next thing we're going to get into is we're going to get into hatching. And hatching is something that is very uh, difficult for some people. But once you understand it, it's really easy to do. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to hatch our drawing. Now, hatching is used in a variety of situations. It's generally used to show a little bit of realism and to help people understand what the building is supposed to look like. There's a few ways to access it. You can just type it in like I do. So just type in hatch and you're going to see it's going to show up the command right there. Another way you can do it is you can come here to draw and you're going to see there's the hatch command right in the top left hand corner with your lines and polylines. So you can click that, type it in, whatever you want. We get the same result. So just type in hatch and you're going to have a new command uh, show up on your uh, ribbon and you're going to see that it is hatch creation. So what this does is it allows us to select a pattern. It's going to allow us to adjust properties and it's going to allow us to, you know, set hatching so that it works for our drawing. If you are using AutoCAD 2025, there is a new feature that should have been added a long, long time ago, in my opinion. Um, but uh, it allows you to create hatches out of circles and you can just draw and, and rectangles and you can just draw in your hatching wherever you need it. If you're using an older version of AutoCAD, don't worry about it. We're not going to use that in this video. Uh, we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way. So if you come here to pattern, you're going to see there is a lot of patterns in here that can help us kind of, you know, sense, get us get a sense of what the building is going to look like. So for this um, drawing here, we're going to want to look for something that is kind of like insulation, uh, insulation-y. Uh, it gives a nice look to it. I'm probably going to use, you see there's concrete, there's a ton of bricks, there's little hatches everywhere. Uh, for this example and for the sake of time, I'm just going to click ANSI 38. So I'm going to click ANSI 38 and you're going to see if I come up here, I can select what I need. One thing to note is we're going to want to come to our layers and we're going to switch from text and we're also going to want to switch and create, I'm going to create a new layer, you don't have to. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it uh, insulation. And then I'm going to change it from red and I'm going to make it a more, eh, green's not a nice color, I'll just make it a little pinky. And there we go. One thing to note is I did not have um, walls. Uh, in a layer in layers. I forgot that and neglected it in the previous video. Uh, so I apologize for that. Um, but uh, I just used the zero layer. Uh, anyways, let's continue. So insulation, and then we're going to come here, do our insulation. We're going to type in hatch again. We're going to want to go to hatch. And we're going to want to adjust our properties to what we need. So we have ANSI 38. We have, we have everything here. Um, we're going to want to just specify a start point. So I need to see what's going on in mine. I want to pick an internal point. And then I'm going to see, you're going to see that our hatching is going to show us where it's going to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to just, we're going to click on the walls. We're going to put it around the walls. And that looks pretty good to me. You're going to see that my dimension is kind of messing up my hatching. So I'm going to actually want to move that. Once I'm done clicking on my walls, I can press enter and my hatching will stay. So you're going to see our hatching looks pretty bad right now. Um, I'm actually just going to erase the thickness of the walls. And then I'm going to hatch again. And I'm going to move this out. I'm going to move this out. And I'm going to move anything else out that is messing with my hatching. So that's okay, that's okay, that's good. So we're going to just type in hatch again. We're going to pick our internal points. We're going to hatch. And there you have it. Our hatching looks good now. Once that's done, click escape. So we're going to come here and we're going to click on our hatch. And you're going to see that whatever you click down, it's not separate. It's one hatch until you press enter or escape. Uh, that's really important to know because if you're hatching multiple things and you make a mistake, it can erase everything. So keep that in mind when you're doing that. 
So if we come up here, you're going to see we have a scale. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to play with the scale until we get it to where we want it to go. So if I press 5, you're going to see it's getting a little easier to see. So I'm just, I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to change it maybe to 10. You see, again, it's getting easier to see. Well, let's go and let's change it to 25. That's better. So it looks better already. You're going to see that we didn't select the one hatch, and I actually have two hatches here. So I am going to erase, erase the one hatch. So we're just going to erase that, and there we go. I apologize about that. So we're going to, so you can see that our hatching looks way better. It's very, and it looks just significantly better than it did. That's something to keep in mind when you are hatching is that you're going to have to play around with it a little bit. You can also make annotative. You can make it annotative, but uh, I tend to adjust it to my own preference because sometimes I need things like rocks to look a little bigger or bricks uh, or a little smaller depending on the application. So that's another thing to keep in mind. So with that said, this is the conclusion of the video. Uh, I hope you had a good time in this video. Uh, we're probably going to put out a bonus video on this series for a few things we didn't cover. We're going to do some elevations and everything, in the, hopefully in the next few weeks. Uh, and if you're interested in that, click the bell notification. Go like and subscribe and share our videos. If you're new to AutoCAD and you need some help, we have a free masterclass we're giving out on our website. This is to help you guys learn how to use AutoCAD and to get into it. So just go check that link down in the description. Go to our website, sign up, and you're going to see, you're going to have access to over three hours of content. And this is going to get you to really start learning how to use AutoCAD. If you're a more advanced user or you're in college or university or even high school and you are looking forward to you know, a career in drafting or you want something to put on your resume, we have something for that too. We got a free webinar coming up in June on June 15th, sorry. Uh, and that free webinar is to give you information on the Autodesk Certified User Program. We're actually going to be teaching this. So go to our website. We have another link down in the description. Go click on that. Sign up for the web, from for the webinar, and you know you also subscribe. Click the bell notification, and you'll get a notification when we have the webinar live. I think it's at 9:30 a.m. With all that said, thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next video, and thank you for making everything possible.